Hello students, welcome to the chemistry class. Today we are going to start our new chapter electrochemistry. Electrochemistry is the study of generation of electricity by the help of energy released during spontaneous chemical reactions and also we study about conduction of non-spontaneous chemical reaction by the help of electricity. In this chapter we are going to study about two types of cells electrochemical cells or galvanic cells and second electrolytic cells. Electrochemical cells convert chemical energy to electrical energy. On the other hand, electrolytic cells convert electrical energy into chemical energy. This chapter is of, is of lot of practical importance because most of the reactive elements like sodium, potassium, calcium and the compounds like sodium carbonate, sodium hydroxide, sodium bicarbonate, they are obtained by electrolytic process. Also, the batteries, the dry cells, fuel cells which we use, they are electrochemical cells. So first, let us start with electrochemical cells. Electrochemical cell is a device in which redox reaction is carried and the decrease in free energy appear as electrical energy. It is also known as galvanic cell or voltaic cell. Let us take an example of zinc copper electrochemical cell. Here we have taken aqueous solution of zinc sulfate and copper sulfate in two different beakers. A zinc rod is placed in zinc sulfate solution and a copper rod is placed in copper sulfate solution. Both the electrodes, zinc rod and copper rod, they are connected through a wire and a galvanometer along with a switch. The two electrolytic solutions are connected through a salt bridge. Here salt bridge is a U-shaped tube which is filled with a paste of potassium chloride or potassium nitrate in agar agar. The two main functions of salt bridge is that it completes the inner circuit and also it maintains the electrical neutrality of the two solutions. On setting up this electrochemical cell, we will record following observation. First we will see that the galvanometer is giving deflection towards left side. It means current is flowing from copper rod to zinc rod or we can say that electrons are moving from zinc rod to copper rod. Also we will see that zinc rod will lose its weight and copper rod will gain its weight. The concentration of zinc ion in zinc sulfate solution will increase and the concentration of copper ion in copper sulfate solution will decrease. So these all will be our observations. So not, let us try to understand these observations. So we will see here as the electrochemical cell will be set up in the left hand side that is oxidation half cell zinc has more tendency to get oxidized so here at anode zinc atom from the zinc rod zinc atom from the zinc rod they will lose electron and they will come in the solution in the form of zinc ion As a result, concentration of zinc ion in the solution will increase and these electrons will get accumulated over the rod. Same way, at cathode, copper ion from the solution, they will move towards rod, they will take electron from the rod. And they will get deposited as copper. As a result, the concentration of copper ion in the solution will decrease. One more thing we will see here, that in the anode part, the concentration of zinc ion is increasing in the solution. As a result, the solution will develop positive polarity and the electrons are accumulated over the rod. So the rod will have negative polarity. So a potential difference is developed between electrode and the electrolyte. Same way, here we will see that solution is losing copper ion. It means solution will develop negative polarity and the rod will develop positive polarity. So here also a potential difference will be developed between electrode and electrolyte. So this potential difference which is developed between electrode and electrolyte is known as electrode potential. And if the concentration of solution is 1 molar and the temperature is 298 Kelvin that is standard state then the electrode potential between the rod and the electrolyte is known as standard electrode potential. 
How to determine standard electrode potential? We will see later today. So it is clear that due to this oxidation reaction at anode and reduction at cathode, zinc rod has developed negative polarity and copper rod has developed positive polarity. So a potential difference is developed between these two electrodes also. So potential difference between the two electrodes in an open circuit is known as standard EMF. If the cell is in a standard state, that is 1 molar concentration and 298 Kelvin temperature. No, so if we connect the two electrodes through a wire and a galvanometer, we will see that electrons will start moving from zinc rod to copper rod. As a result, current flows from copper rod to zinc rod. Now we can see the complete reaction of the process. So complete overall reaction can be written as we can add these two reactions zinc plus copper ion gives zinc ion plus copper so this is the overall reaction for zinc copper electrochemical cell a cell can also be represented in the following manner On the left hand side, we will write the oxidation half cell and on right side, we will write the reduction half cell. In oxidation half cell, zinc is getting oxidized to zinc ion. So that will be written as zinc, a vertical line, then zinc ion. This represents that electrode and electrolyte is separated by a vertical line. On the right side, we will write copper ion vertical line copper here in cathode half cell copper ion is getting reduced to copper both the half cells are separated by two vertical line which represents salt bridge so this is the pattern of representation of an electrochemical cell now we can also calculate the value of standard emf or standard cell potential standard emf of any cell can be calculated by taking the difference of standard electrode potential of cathode minus standard electrode potential of anode so using this formula we can calculate standard cell potential but before we calculate the standard cell potential, we shall know how to calculate and how to determine the standard electrode potential. Standard electrode potential of any electrode cannot be determined directly due to following reasons. First, any half cell, whether oxidation half cell or reduction half cell, will not work on its own unless it is connected to the other half cell. Also, the electron releasing or electron accepting tendency of an electrode is a relative tendency not absolute tendency so to measure standard electrode potential of any electrode we need a reference electrode the most commonly used reference electrode is standard hydrogen electrode its standard electrode potential is taken as zero a standard hydrogen electrode consists of a platinum wire coated with platinum black it has a platinum foil at its end it is dipped in a solution containing one molar of hydrogen ion and Hydrogen gas is bubbled through the solution at 1 bar pressure. The temperature of the cell is maintained at 298 Kelvin. This electrode is also known as reversible electrode as it can act both as cathode and anode. When it acts as anode, then hydrogen gas molecules will get oxidized to hydrogen ion. We can see here. hydrogen molecule it will lose electron and it will change into hydrogen ion in the same way when it acts as cathode then hydrogen ions from the solution hydrogen ions from the solution will gain electron and they will get reduced to form hydrogen gas 
Thus we see that standard hydrogen electrode can act both as anode and cathode. So it is used as a reference electrode to determine standard electrode potential of other electrodes. Now let us see some examples of determination of standard electrode potential of some of the electrodes. Suppose we want to determine the standard electrode potential of zinc electrode. For this, we set up an electrochemical cell in which a zinc rod dipped in one molar zinc sulfate solution constitutes one half cell and a standard hydrogen electrode is taken as other half cell. Here the reading of voltmeter is found to be 0.76 volt and also the direction of current is from hydrogen electrode to zinc electrode. It means that electron is flowing from zinc to hydrogen electrode. So we can say that here zinc electrode is acting as anode and hydrogen electrode is acting as cathode. Now by using formula that standard cell potential is equal to standard electrode potential of cathode minus standard electrode potential of anode. We can write here that standard cell potential is equal to standard electrode potential of hydrogen electrode because here cathode is hydrogen minus standard electrode potential of zinc electrode. So here the reading of voltmeter was 0.76 standard electrode potential of hydrogen electrode is taken as 0 minus standard electrode potential of zinc. So we see here that standard electrode potential of zinc electrode is found to be minus 0.76 volt. In this way we can determine the standard electrode potential of any electrode by connecting it with a standard hydrogen electrode and setting up an electrochemical cell. When different electrode potential means different electrodes are arranged in an order of their standard electrode potential we will get a series which is known as electrochemical series. In this series the electrodes having higher electrode potentials or we can say higher standard reduction potentials are kept at the top and which are having the lower value of standard reduction potential they are kept at the bottom. Remember greater the value of standard reduction potential more is the tendency to get reduced or we can say they act as very strong oxidizing agent. Till now we were calculating electrode potential or EMF of any cell in standard state that is one molar concentration and at 298 Kelvin temperature. But suppose we have to calculate electrode potential or cell potential for any other concentration and at any other temperature. For that we have to use Nernst equation. Suppose we have a general reaction Mn plus ion gains n moles of electron to form solid M. For this reaction electrode potential E m n plus oblique M will be equal to standard electrode potential minus 2.303 RT upon NF log 1 upon concentration of metal ion. This is the Nernst equation. Here E is the electrode potential of the electrode for the given condition. E0 is the standard electrode potential which can be determined from electrochemical series. R is gas constant. T is temperature in Kelvin scale. N represents number of moles of electrons and F, F is Faraday's constant. Faraday's constant is actually the charge present over one mole of electrons. Its value is equal to 96,487 coulomb which can be written as 96,500 coulomb. Suppose the reaction is occurring at 298 Kelvin temperature. Then by putting the value of temperature R, F 
we can modify the formula for 298 Kelvin temperature that electrode potential will be equal to standard electrode potential minus 0 0.059 upon n log 1 upon concentration of m n plus. So using this formula we can calculate electrode potential for any electrode at 298 Kelvin temperature and this is for at any temperature. Now let us see some examples in which we calculate the electrode potential of an electrode for any other concentration. So here is the question. Calculate the electrode potential of following half cell at 298 Kelvin. Silver ion is getting reduced to silver. The concentration of silver ion is given here 0.1 molar and standard electrode potential of silver is 0.80 volt. So we can easily calculate here using Nernst equation that electrode potential of silver is equal to standard electrode potential of silver minus 0.059 upon n log 1 upon concentration of silver ion. Here the standard reduction potential of silver is given 0 0.80 minus 0 0.059 upon here n will be equal to 1 because in this reaction only one electron is involved into log 1 upon concentration of silver that is 0 0.1 so we can write here 0 0.80 minus 0 0.059 log 1 upon 0 0.1 can be written as 10 and we all know that log 10 is equal to 1 so we will get 0 0.80 minus 0 0.059 that will be equal to 0 0.741 volt in this way, we can determine the electrode potential at any condition for different electrodes. In our next class, we will see how Nernst equation can be used to determine the cell potential of a cell for different concentration and temperature. Thank you.